You've heard the infamous quote that one death is a tragedy, a million is a statistic. We've examined these events from a big picture perspective, but now let's move away from the statistics and look at the personal tragedy. Che Guevara, his image is a global fashion phenomenon. Hopefully, by now, you know why that's so offensive to so many. But giving you the number of executions he ordered is one thing. Seeing the effect is another. They portray him in the, in, in, in the movies as a hero and as a humanitarian. He, he was a cold killer. This is Barbara Rangel's grandfather, Colonel Cornelio Rojas. He was a freedom fighter uh, way before Batista came into power. He was descendant of patriots. His father was a general and his grandfather was also a general brigadier that fought for the Cuba's war of independence against Spain. One day, her grandfather was just gone. When Fidel Castro and Che Guevara arrived in Havana, it was January 59, and that's precisely when my grandfather disappeared. My family had no idea where he was. All of a sudden, my family was in the living room watching television, and uh, they see my grandfather uh, walking. They were extremely happy to see him, and um, then they, they realized that he was walking towards the wall. He started screaming, and my grandmother uh, collapsed. They realized that he's going to be executed. When they asked him uh, if he wanted to be blindfolded, and he said no, and he said, um, there you have the revolution, take care of it. He asked if he could give the firing orders, and he says, aim, fire. He died like a hero. And he was executed by cowards. There was no trial whatsoever. Che Guevara did not allow a trial. He was taken prisoner at the beginning of January and executed January 7th. That is something that I will never forget. There is not one day in my life that I don't think about him. Barbara's pregnant mother was so traumatized, she went into labor three months early. What is a person supposed to do, you know, rejoice for the birth of your, your son or cry for the death of your father? Meet Barbara's mother, Blanca. Che Guevara me quitó lo más grande que yo podía tener en mi vida porque mi, para mí mi padre era lo más grande porque él era muy buen padre. Eso me lo quitó el Che Guevara y, y por eso 50 años vengo padeciendo y nunca podré olvidar lo que me hizo. For those who lived with the real Che, it is impossible to understand, in America of all places, how anyone would want him on a t-shirt. Please do a lot of research before you make a fool of yourself wearing a t-shirt of a, a cold killing machine. Throughout the interview with Barbara and Blanca, they were incredibly strong. But you can see how deeply these events have shaken them, even to this day. Yo no he podido ser la misma mujer que fui antes. Porque yo... <laughs> this is the real legacy of Che. It's murder, destruction, and broken families. So what can we do to correct the lies? Maybe it's time to make the truth a bit more fashionable. Maybe it's time to remember what these governments were really responsible for. Maybe it's time to ignore the revisionist rehab of these figures and recognize who they really were. Maybe telling the truth about socialism and communism now can help us avoid all of these things again. Just maybe. Speaking up and bluntly telling the truth can stop the next generation from looking at things the same way. Marx defines socialism as a pit stop between capitalism and communism. It isn't an end point. While sometimes this change happens slowly, it always ends badly, but perhaps never worse than with Chairman Mao.
Great leader, great commander, and great helmsman, Chairman Mao. Of all the horror that communism has brought to the world, perhaps the worst was brought to us by Mao Zedong. When I was in China, we were all told Mao was like our God. When we wanted to say what I say is absolutely true, we would say, I swear to Chairman Mao. Mao used his power to crush the Chinese people. The majority of his crimes came in two distinct waves. From 1959 to 1961 was the so-called Great Leap Forward, which was actually a gigantic leap backwards in which he tried to collectivize and communize agriculture. And they came to him after the first year and they said, well, Chairman, five million people have died of famine. And he said, no matter, keep going. And the second year they came back and they, and they said, 10 million Chinese have died. He said, no matter, continue. The third year, 20 million Chinese have died. And he said, finally, well, perhaps this is not the best idea that I've ever had. When he was told, you know, his people were dying of starvation, Mao said, educate the peasants to eat less. Death have benefit, they can fertilize the land. Mao's approach turned from brutal indifference to revenge. With the Cultural Revolution, his mission was to destroy both enemies and intellectuals. Professors, teachers, sat in the corner with a dunce cap on them. They were made to get down on all fours and bark like a dog. Jung Chang and her family also found themselves in Mao's crosshairs. My father was one of the few who stood up to Mao and protested the Cultural Revolution. My mother was under tremendous pressure to denounce my father. She refused. So as a result, my mother was made to kneel on broken glass. She was paraded in the streets where children spat at her and threw stones at her. She was exiled to a camp. When her father wrote to protest the Cultural Revolution, he paid the ultimate price. My mother tried to stop him. My mother said, you know, do you want to ruin the lives of our children? So he said, you know, what about the children of the victims? As a result, he was imprisoned, tortured, driven insane. He was exiled to a camp and died prematurely, very tragically. As a victim of Mao's crushing rule, Zhang Cheng's father was not alone. Some 65 million Chinese died under Maoist communism. And Mao just didn't care. And he said for all his projects to take off, half of China may well have to die. By a ratio of three or four to one, we certainly can say that Mao was the greatest mass murderer of the 20th century. Two of my favorite political philosophers, Mao Zedong and Mother Teresa. Dunn's comments, once again, highlight the odd treatment that leftist totalitarianism receives by too many in our society. Communism is looked at as something we can borrow from liberally, even today. But the truth is that it is among history's most proficient killers. According to the Black Book of Communism, published by Harvard University Press, nearly 100 million people died under communism in the 20th century. But it all flows out of this idea that the, the communists think that they can create a new society. And anybody who gets in their way, they will cut down, they will kill, they will imprison, and they will eliminate in pursuit of that goal. With 100 million killed, communism exists in a very exclusive club alongside with the planet's worst communicable diseases like smallpox and the bubonic plague. But it's not just communism. It is the truth of any government with too much power. Some government is necessary, too much is suicidal. Every all-powerful government has elements of what Marx called the revolutionary holocaust. The relentless pursuit of nirvana and the price it's worth paying to get there in human life. It is only understanding history that we can stop this from happening again and again and again. America, this is only the beginning of rediscovering the things that have been lost. We've developed a whole page on this special at glenbeck.com. For more information, check it out. From New York, good night, America.